Welcome to my channel. My name is Fred and I'm the owner of Multiline Designs. I'm an electrical engineer and an independent ePlan consultant. Today I'll be showing you how to install ePlan Electric P8 version 2.8. I've installed ePlan many times for many different users and I believe that I can help you navigate the installation process like a pro. Today I will demonstrate how to install a single user standalone license. Network licenses are also available, but I will not be discussing that process today. Before we install ePlan, you'll need a handful of items. Some of these items are often overlooked, which can complicate the installation. You'll need a Windows PC with admin rights, an ePlan Electric P8 license, an ePlan customer ID number, an ePlan USB license dongle, the ePlan installation files, an internet connection, and you'll also need a third-party database application such as SQL or Access, but we'll discuss that later. Okay, that was just the overview. Now let's look at each one of these items in a bit more detail. The system requirements for ePlan can be found at the ePlan Quick Start webpage, but there is very little mention of the recommended PC hardware. In previous versions, ePlan was very forgiving when it came to hardware, but as ePlan embraces 3D modeling for panel layouts, this will demand more from your hardware. ePlan currently favors a faster processor speed over fancy GPU, so I would encourage you to get the best processor that you can. Now, a good video card is still important, but I don't feel that it will benefit your day-to-day -day experience as much as a fast CPU will. Many users report good performance with an entry-level gaming card. As for memory, I would consider 8 gigabytes of RAM the working minimum, and more is always better. You'll also need a Windows 64-bit operating system to run any current version of ePlan, so that means Windows 7 and newer. Yes, you'll need a license to use ePlan. ePlan can be purchased in many different versions, but for the most part, the software all installs the same way. When you purchase ePlan, someone in your organization was sent two very important bits of information. First, your ePlan license number, which is often referred to as your dongle number, and then your ePlan customer ID. Find this information and have it available. You'll need it during the install. If you're having trouble finding this information, just simply contact your ePlan sales rep and they'll be happy to provide you with it. ePlan license dongle. ePlan is currently moving in the direction of cloud-based or remote license authentication. But at the moment, the majority of you will still use local license verification. For local license holders, ePlan validates your license through the use of a USB hardware key, also known as a license dongle. This device must be installed in a USB port on your computer whenever you use ePlan. Drivers will be needed for the license dongle and they are included with ePlan installation files. If you have not already noticed, your ePlan license number is etched onto the side of your dongle. Of course, you'll need access to the internet to download your installation files, but there are several other features that will require internet access by ePlan. The help system for ePlan is actually provided via a website, as is the ePlan data portal. Internet access also provides a user with many important features such as product updates, the ePlan forum, and the ePlan support system. I also want to say that having internet access is strongly recommended, but is not actually required to use ePlan. Once you have ePlan installed and working, all you need to use it is your license dongle. Okay, let's go get those installation files. I'm going to go to the ePlan USA website. It's ePlanUSA.com. I'm going to let the page load. I'm going to look for the support menu and click on it. And now on the left-hand side of the page, I'm going to look for the download menu. Click on it. All right, down here at the on the main page, it's going to ask you for your ePlan dongle number or your ePlan license number, followed by your customer ID. This is information that we talked about before that you should have handy. And then when you've entered that information in, you can select login. If you get rejected, uh, just uh, check your credentials and try to enter them again. And if it problem persists, just contact your local ePlan sales rep and they'll help you to ensure that you have the right information. Okay, on the next screen, select ePlan Electric P8 under the download menu on the left. 
and that will expand and you will see releases tools and archive i'm going to select releases and a drop down list will appear we'll select version 2.8 uh, and a new screen will appear on the right. The link that we want to select is right here. Uh, I'm going to select that to start downloading uh, the installation files. I'm going to skip the pro panel. Uh, it will come along with ePlan. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and select save. I currently have it already downloaded, so I'll spare you that. Okay, now that we've begun downloading, let's go get our validation code. Click on the Create Validation Code button. Wait for the page to load. If the page loads with the wrong language, you can change it right here at the top of the page. Just toggle between the desired languages. Uh, simply enter your ePlan license number, followed by your customer ID, and then select Send. You'll be presented with a validation code. It should be a pretty long number. Copy that to your desktop uh, somewhere where you can retrieve it. You'll need that once ePlan is installed. Okay, in my downloads folder, you should see a zipped or compressed file. Go ahead and right click and extract all. I tend to just extract them to the local directory. Um, you'll need these for maybe a day or so, and then you can delete them. I've gone ahead and downloaded this and installed it already, so I'll just continue on. I'm going to Double click and drill down. I'm going to right click on the setup icon and select run as administrator. That's right click on the setup icon, run as administrator. I'm going to enter my administrator password and I should now be greeted with a new installation dialog. Look at the top here and verify that it's asking you to install ePlan Electric P8. Uh, you want to confirm that. I'm getting a notice that I've already have it installed. There's a note here that uh, reminds you that you'll need a third-party database application to use ePlan. Uh, we'll download and install that later. Um, and down here at the bottom, it's now mentioning that there's a new license technology. So for those of you who use older versions of ePlan, read that carefully. By accepting the new license uh, for version 2.8, you are limiting yourself to versions 2.4 through 2.8. If you need to use anything older than that, um, you can read the details here on this link, and I would strongly encourage you to contact your local ePlan sales rep and discuss the particulars with them before you proceed. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select Next. I'm going to select the license terms here in the bottom left, and I'm going to select Next. Okay, we should now see the ePlan Setup Manager dialog. Uh, this is probably the most important screen you'll see during the installation process, and I'll take a moment to discuss each of these settings. Uh, ePlan Original Master Data, this is internally referred to as OData. We can skip that for now. System Master Data. Uh, during the installation process, ePlan will create a folder structure that will store the most commonly used design data and files. These are files that you'll actually use in your designs. These are files such as parts, databases, component spec sheets, report forms, plot frames, and title blocks. You get the idea. I refer to this as system master data. ePlan recommends that you create a default installation of this data on your piece, local PC. Even if you plan to work in a team environment and want to share these files, ePlan still encourages you to install these default files on your local PC. Later, when we want to create a version of the system master data for your team on the network server, you can just make a copy of one of these default local master data files. For reasons that may not seem obvious now, you may actually want to have multiple copies of this data. I'll discuss this in a later video. ePlan strongly recommends that you use the default installation location for these files. It's commonly referred to as Cupid or C User Public ePlan Data, just as it shows here. Uh, this will help simplify troubleshooting should you ever need the help of an ePlan support engineer. I will recommend that when installing the default files on your C drive, that you change the default 
file path slightly to rename the data folder to include the current version number of ePlan that you are installing. This will give you the option of having more than one version of ePlan installed on your PC at one time. It basically installs them in parallel. This also helps keep the data separate so that you're not mixing and matching. All right, so I'm going to enter a V28 for version 2.8. The next thing we have is a company code. ePlan creates company specific subfolders in your system master data folders. When the master data folders are created, you will see that ePlan organizes much of the contents of these folders by creating subfolders using company names. As an example, the documents folder is often used to store data sheets for components that are then linked to a part in the parts database. Having these organized by the manufacturer's name can be very helpful to find and store information. ePlan will use the company code that you've entered here as the basis for creating many new subfolders. I would encourage you to use a short version of your company name if you have one. Once you begin using and linking data to your databases, definitely avoid the urge to rename any of these folders. I'll discuss this topic in more detail in a later video. I'm going to select MLD for multi-line designs to keep things short. Next, I have user settings, workstation settings, and company section settings. For now, I'll leave those as the default. And ePlan can easily switch between any measuring units, but for now, simply select the uh, units that you will most likely use to create uh, layout drawings. I'm going to select inch and now I'll select next. ePlan is going to ask for a confirmation that I want to install. I'm going to hit yes and the installation process will begin. Just take a few moments, the faster the hardware, the quicker the install. Okay, once ePlan is uh, completed, just select Finish. To finish the installation, I'll start up a virtual machine. This will help to ensure that my installation will proceed just like yours. I've tried to install ePlan several times before for demos, and it really just doesn't work unless I use a virtual machine. It's just too difficult to replicate the conditions of a fresh install once you've already installed the application. This virtual machine will allow me to mimic the exact same conditions that you'll see during your installation. I've already set this up to be right where we left off in the last video. Now I know it's attempting to just click on that desktop icon and launch ePlan, but we still have a driver to install. Okay, I'll go to my downloads folder which is where I have my ePlan installation files. I'm going to drill down until I get to this main level here. I'll click on the services folder and then the drivers folder. And in the drivers folder is a file called HACCP user setup. That's the file we're looking for. That's the driver for your USB license dongle. I'll double click on that and run the application. Say yes. Take a few moments to load the files. Okay, I'm going to click finish and the drivers have been installed. All right, so I'm going to close out of the download folder and we're ready for the next step. With the driver installed, we can now launch ePlan. Let's go to our desktop, double click on the ePlan icon. We should be greeted with an activate license dialog box. We're going to select the first option. There are other options available. I won't go into those today. We're going to select use online activation. This is where we want to go find and copy our EID code that we got in the last video. Select OK, and it'll take a few moments to run and uh, validate your license. OK, after a few moments, we should see this dialog box that indicates that your license was activated. You'll also see a list of the ePlan products that you're licensed to use. We can close this. ePlan will now continue to load 
now that it's been uh, activated and you shouldn't see that uh, that dialog again. Now this is uh, asking about the different menus we want to load when we run ePlan. Uh, we're all experts now, uh, so let's select the expert mode. I'm going to select do not show again. Okay, we're greeted with a Windows security alert. This means ePlan needs access to our firewall. I'm going to allow access. ePlan wants to know if you want to participate in their customer improvement program. I'm going to select yes. You can select whatever you like. Um, there's a tutorial screen here. It's asking me for my dialogue language. I'm going to select English and accept the use of cookies. Okay, that concludes the installation of ePlan. The next step that we will need to take to make it ready for use will be to set up or install the database application. I'll discuss that in my next video. Thanks for stopping by. If you're looking for some help with your next ePlan project, please feel free to contact me here at multilinedesigns.com, your independent ePlan consultants.